The leave-taking was the most painful scene I ever witnessed. Sturdy Highlanders grasped each other by the hand, while the muscles of their faces and bodies quivered with emotion. Women hung on the necks of their friends, and were in some cases removed by force. To say they sobbed aloud would faintly express their sorrow. So begins a description of Scottish Highlanders as they farewelled their families before boarding the Hercules immigrant ship. Today I'm going to follow the voyage of the ill-fated Hercules, which sailed from Scotland in December 1852 and arrived in Melbourne the following August, eight months later. In the 1850s, around 30,000 Scots immigrated as assisted immigrants to Australia, hoping to find employment and seek a better life. Many came from the Highlands, where the collapse of the economy, the eviction or clearance of tenants by the Highland landlords, and the effects of the potato famine had left thousands without work and close to starvation. Poor relief was not enough. Immigration was considered the only suitable option. A number of immigration schemes were set up, including one by the Highland and Island Immigration Society, the HIES, which aimed to resettle the poorest tenant farmers from the Highlands to Australia, which had a desperate need for labour. This scheme also assisted the Highland landowners by freeing their land for more profitable sheep grazing. Between 1852 and 1857, the HIES helped nearly 5,000 people immigrate to Australia, including the 756 who travelled on the Hercules. Passage was provided to those of good character, who were sober and industrious, and preference was given to the most destitute, to entire family groups and to those with relevant skills, such as agricultural labourers, shepherds, carpenters and domestic servants. The Hercules passenger list provides valuable details, such as their name, the Highland estate where they lived, and remarks about the health and circumstances of each family group. On the 26th of December 1852, the Hercules departed Campbelltown. James Chant, the HIES immigrant officer, witnessed the passengers' despair at leaving their homeland. They threw their arms into the air, giving full vent to their grief, as they gazed for the last time on the black peaty glen and bleak rocky hills over which they had long been accustomed to roam, and to which they were so devotedly attached. Within hours of departure the ship hit a fierce storm, which it endured for four days before sheltering in Rothsay to make repairs. They lost two men to sickness, and on the 30th of December, Captain Bainton wrote, We have a case of fever, and another of smallpox and measles on board, but I have no doubt that by the judicious arrangements of Mr Carey, the ship's surgeon, and his assistant, we shall prevent its spreading. Two weeks later, they set sail once more, but encountered yet another fierce storm that lasted for several days. The ship docked in Queenstown Island on the 20th of January, by this stage there were over 50 cases of smallpox on board, and an outbreak of typhus fever was also discovered. Fifteen crew were taken to the Naval Hospital on Hall Below Island in Cork Harbour, but an attempt to land the passengers in Queenstown was met with much opposition by the townsfolk, the health officers and the Irish government. Discussion raged for several weeks, by which time several hundred passengers were infected. The Cork Examiner wrote a damning article stating that it was a revolting instance of the barbarous and cruel folly of our quarantine laws, and referred to the Hercules as a prison of death. Eventually, a hulk was brought to the harbour, where it acted as a floating hospital for the fever patients. Smallpox patients were housed in the hospital on Hallbelow Island, where a large shed was also erected to house healthy passengers. The ship remained in quarantine for three months. Fifty-six people died, including Lawrence Carey, the ship's doctor, and Mrs Innes, the matron. Seventeen children were orphaned and returned to Scotland. The Cork Examiner stated that the case of the ship Hercules was, without precedent, in the history of official mismanagement and neglect. On April the 14th, the Hercules finally set sail for Australia, carrying only 380 of the original 756 passengers. 
the remaining passengers were relocated to other immigrant ships. In many cases, families were separated, never to see each other again. From all accounts, the voyage to Australia was fairly uneventful. She docked in Adelaide on the 20th of July, leaving 194 immigrants, and finally arrived in Melbourne on the 3rd of August, where 183 disembarked. Having survived this long and perilous voyage, and finally setting foot on Australian soil, one might wonder where their journey would next take them. Thank you.